Hi guys, this is Ravi Teja. Welcome to my YouTube channel Power Electronic Basics. In this video, I'm going to explain about EMC and EMI. So in this session, I will cover about what is EMC and EMI, sources of EMI, types of EMC and EMI test that are performed in EMC and EMI lab, standards of EMI and EMC. What is EMI and EMC? EMC stands for the electromagnetic compatibility and EMI stands for electromagnetic interference. First I'll explain about what is EMC. For example, I had considered a mobile phone. So the radiation emitted by the mobile phone should not disturb the other device function or signal. In the same way, the radiation emitted by the other devices should not disturb my mobile function or signal. So this phenomena is said to be a EMC. EMC describes how well your device can function in its EM environment without causing any unwanted effect to the surrounding equipments. Your device should not emit radiation or the radiation emitted by the other device should not cause malfunction of your device. This kind of phenomena is said to be EMC. What is EMI? EMI is said to be a kind of noise signals. Uh, it might be an electrical noise or it might be a radiation noise which is emitted by the different kinds of source. EMI is a kind of electronic emission that interferes with components of your device, RF system and electronic device. EMI can be result of man-made or natural occurrence. For example, your cell phone tower or TV signal disk will emit radiation signal. Even the natural occurrence might be the lightning surge. Because of this, electronic signal is generated. So, EMI is a result of electric or magnetic fields acting on the device causing it to malfunction. I will give an another example of EMI. EMI is a kind of a noise. Why aeroplane crew says to switch off mobile phones and laptops? Because the radiation emitted by your mobile phone or laptop will disturb the aeroplane's high frequency network equipments while landing or takeoff the aeroplane will send some signals to radar so the signals will be interrupted because of your noise generated by your mobile phone so this is the interior infrastructure of the aeroplane which is containing n number of high frequency operated electronic equipments and uh, network systems are present how many sources are there by which this EMI can be generated? The sources are broadly classified into two types. One is continuous interference and other is transient interference. What is continuous interference? When the source continuously emit noise signal at a given range of frequency, that is called as a continuous interference. And what is transient interference? If source emit pulse or transient energy for a short duration of time that is said to be the transient interference. In transient interference we will be having an electrostatic discharge, transient voltage surge, voltage ringing noises. In continuous we will be having an audio frequency, radio frequency and broadband uh, signals. So all these are uh, kind of EMI generation sources. You can see the scale beside the bandwidth of radiation is from 50 megahertz to 1000 megahertz. All this spectrum will have different kind of signals in which TV, radio, mobile etc. signals are transmitted from source. So depends upon application the transmission bandwidth and frequency changes. So far we had covered what is EMI, what is EMC, sources of EMI. Now we will see how many ways are there by which our device will be affected. It means we test our device in different EMI coupling methods. 
in this figure victim is my device and source is the place the noise signal is generated basically the noise is generated in two ways one is radiative and one is conductive what is radiative if the noise signal is transmitted in air that is called radiative if the noise signal is transmitted through wires that is called conductive to know the performance of the victim we conduct different kind of test so we conduct four tests on the victim one is conduction emission test second is a radiation emission test third is immunity to conduction emission fourth is immunity to radiation emission so this immunity to conduction emission are classified into surge immunity and transient immunity and immunity to radiation emission is classified as esd immunity and high frequency immunity test what is conduction emission test for example if you see voltage waveform across the mosfet in switch mode power supply you will find a voltage hiccups so these hiccups will be reflected back on the power conducting line or power conducting path to source so if there is another device present parallel to your device that other device will be get affected because of your noise signal generated on power path conduction emissions are electromagnetic disturbance caused by a device and conducted out by interconnects such as power lines device are required to pass this strengthen limit of the level of such emissions radiation emission test in this test you will check how much amount of radiated noise is emitted from your device radiated emissions test involves in measuring the electromagnetic field strength of the emissions that are unintentionally generated by your product the radiation emission test is concerned about how much your product is emitting radiation in terms of rf energy so this is the equipment in which we can measure the rf so here are different kind of antennas which measure different of frequency range if you see deep into the equipment you can see the antenna this antenna rotates in 360 degree angle your product is placed at the center and the antenna will measure the emission radiated emission in all angles if you see the side walls are coated with anti reflecting material so the radiation emitted by your device will not reflect back to antenna so if you see the test report generated by the system the emission is given in spherical format there is an another test report uh, stating that the blue line indicates the average emission and the green line indicates the peak emission the green line should not cross the red line which is already defined by the standard so and the blue line should not cross the blue line which is also set as per standard depending upon different application the standard is defined standards are differ from country to country if you see here the industrial and household product they are following cisper 11 and cisper 14 for information technology that is cisper 22 and for med medical devices that is an other standard so on immunity to conduction emission this test will explain how much level of our device can withstand the noise signal that is coming from the conducting wires or conducting paths in this we will see what is surge immunity surge immunity surge is defined as an voltage spike so whenever there is a lightning strike or uh, capacitive loads or a 
generators or motors that are present in electrical supply path there they will create a voltage spikes these spikes will be from 0.5 kV to uh, 20 kV there are different countermeasures that by which we can uh, stop the spike entering into our product after designing we apply voltage spikes to the device these spikes are applied as per required specification if the device withstand to the voltage spikes applied so that device have immunity to surge voltage for example we applied 1000 volt spikes the race time of the spike should be in 8 microsecond and 50 percent of these fall in 20 microsecond this is stated as per standard transient immunity voltage transient pulse will be raw up in very short time and has high pulse repetition rate this may be up to 1 megahertz high frequency whereas in surge we saw that the race time and the fall time is defined but whereas in transient the race time and fall time and number of pulses are not defined so there might be n number of pulses uh, so up till 1 megahertz of frequency the pulse rate differs transient voltages temporarily unwanted spikes or billups of voltage in electrical circuit can come from any number of sources either inside or outside of an industrial plant this transient voltages are generated by a turning on and turning of the adjacent loads or this transient can be generated by power factor correction capacitor banks or even distant weather can generate this transient voltages if you see the waveform the input waveform this is the input waveform you can see many spikes are present whereas if you see the uh, surge waveform only a single spike is present so single spike sets to be a surge and the multiple spikes at multiple frequency or a different frequency is said to be a transient immunity to radiation emission this test will explain how much level of our device can withstand to the noise signal that comes from air or vacuum in this we will see esd immunity test esd esd means electrostatic discharge how it is generated when a person walks on a floor the negatively charged electrons enter into the human body the voltage of that electrons might be up to 3 kV it means 3000 volt if the charge body touches the electronic component with bare hand so the electronic component get damage so this phenomena is said to be a ESD so once after the product designed they apply static voltage up to 3 kV on different areas of the product in this case your device should not fail to work after testing so this is the device that generates the static voltage so from the this has a short notch from where the static voltage is given high frequency noise immunity test in previous session we know what is a radiation emission test so if the device is emitting a noise so that radiated noise is generally calculated so in this high frequency noise immunity test we give different noise signal to device and check how immune is our device to noise signals depending upon application and standard we generate noise signals through different antenna at different frequency levels the device should have immunity for radiation emission and should not malfunction this is the lab where the high frequency noise immunity test is done 
so this antenna will generate the high frequency signal noise device is placed on this table the table is made up of an wood and this is an anti reflecting mat so whenever the radiation is fall on the surface it should not reflect back so there is a field generation equipment and there is a measuring equipment this is about the lab construction and how your device is placed in the lab uh, so uh, other immunity tests are performed on the device which is magnetic field voltage dip drops and interruptions harmonic current testing voltage flicker testing in future i'll explain about this text and i will explain deep on how to design a line filter that compares to emc and emi calculations involved at time of designing the line filter types of line filter used and their applications and how to check the emc and emi at pre compliance stage if you see the standards there are uh, different standards that are applicable for different countries so cisper standards is applicable widely applicable in india so cisper 11 that is for industrial cisper 12 that is for vehicle and cisper 14 that is for uh, this uh, household appliances and cisper 15 for lighting and so on and uh, you can refer this uh, slide or the pdf below given description and if you see there is an european standards if you consider european standards two categories in this one is for electrical emission and for uh, another is for immunity to the electrical emission apart from this we also have a universal standard iec standard so this is uh, widely accepted in french For more videos please subscribe my channel and click bell icon write your comments below thank you